and to know that we have lots of differences ar around the globe, but we are really connected in this intention of building community and supporting each other um, to be self to live our whole and healthy and safe selves. So I'm I'm very delighted to be here. Um, and like the doctor said, I use the words queer and lesbian to identify myself. And my gender pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am cis-bodied female. Um, and uh, I am a professor. Uh, and, and like he said, I've been out since the 70s. So I'm going to talk about some of that. But I also want to give a special um, thank you and uh Shout out to Milan Dutta, who I have worked on when Milan has been in the United States, that we've worked on um, as a leader. He's been a leader here in the Minneapolis and St. Paul in terms of um, developing an organization called Out in the Backyard that serves um, to connect and reduce isolation about lesbian to be more white. There was nothing around me that was, was other than white and heterosexual models. And so we moved to the city when I was 10. And, um, and um, I, so, you, you know, I, maybe I was, you know, when I was about 23 or 24, very involved in the um, women's movement and very involved in the anti-war, sterilized in our hospitals against their wishes or without even knowing, forced sterilization of poor women and women of color. Um, so because Karen worked at this hospital where this was happening, um, we got involved in a coalition of other women's groups to work to stop the practice of forced steriliz sterilization. You know, it's, it was a public health policy in many, many cities around the country to sterilize women, uh, poor women and women of color, um, because they felt like they were doing good to save them from having more children when they were so poor. Um, so it was there, the public health policy of the time was deeply rooted in racism and bias and classism against poor women. Um, so we were involved in that also. So the Lesbian Feminist Organizing Committee was very responsive to what people, lesbians who came to us, we had monthly community meetings where people would come, we would report on what's happening. And, you know, we would do community organizing around um, some of the needs of the times. So the organization continued into the 80s. Um, I was involved in leadership for many, many years and, and um, stepped away when my mama unexpectedly died of cancer. So the other part of this coming out story in the 70s. So I was involved in this organization in my own developing my own sense of my own pride. And um, the other thing that was going on, um, which is true for some people, um, queer people that I um, came out to myself, I started building community with other people that were like me. I was involved in the leadership of this organization. And I hadn't yet come out to my parents. Um, and so um, I, I was forced to come out to my mother because I was involved in a, um, a public protest and boycott of this um, uh, movie star that was going around the country. Um, targeting cities that had some gay rights ordinance. Um, she was targeting cities and using her star power to negatively um, uh, uh, promote discrimination and oppression to try to repeal these laws on the books. So I, the, the how this uh, act or how this uh, movie star and her discrimination um, is connected to my coming out story is that as a leader of this group of people that was organizing a protest and a boycott, um, again, this was in the late 1970s, um, it was maybe about three or four years into my 
um, coming out, knowing myself and being involved as a leader in this community, I was interviewed. So again, as I said earlier, there were no um, social media, no computers, no cell phones. The only people, the way that people got news is paper copies of the newspaper or through television. So at this boycott and protest, um, the television stations were there because it was really, really a big deal. This movie star attracted a lot of attention with her negative campaign to repeal in 10 cities around the country to repeal any kind of laws that protected lesbian and gay people. It was a big deal. Lots of new movies, um, news uh, stations were there, TV stations, and I was interviewed. This is coming back to the story of coming out to my mother. I was interviewed um, by uh, the television station that um, my mother watches. So I was just like, oh my God, I just was terrified. My mother is very, I love my mama to pieces at the time. And she was very conservative in her ways, very racist. And I come to find out extremely homophobic, very Catholic uh, in terms of her religion. And so when I came out to her, she was completely um, like many parents are in shock and denial. She went through, you know, parents go through their own stages of, of acceptance, denial, anger, you know, of coming out. They have their stages of coming out, of ha having a, a queer child or a GLBTQ child. Uh, they go through that, but I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know about, um, so I came out to her and she was just completely shut me down and wouldn't believe it. Um, thought she'd rather die than, than um, have me as a lesbian. And, um, and so it was really, really painful. And we never, you know, on this earth, we never got to resolve this or come to be with um, this uh, in an accepting way because she was diagnosed shortly thereafter and died of cancer a few months later. So I just know though, that her spirit, I believe in afterlife and reincarnation. And I know that her spirit is proud and loving of me now. Um, and so, um, so the other thing I wanna say in terms of my coming out process, it's always been important for me. Um, and you know, I, I, in the United States, I have what I call white skin privilege. I have certain power and privilege based on how I look. And, um, that other people that don't look like me um, don't have. And so I have always believed that with this privilege um, that I also have a responsibility to be out when I can. And so I've been out in all of my workplaces, um, not always comfortably out by any means, but I've never lost a job. Some people in that period of time, um, before there were rules or laws, people lost jobs because they were out. Like I said earlier, people lost their children. Um, people were denied access to housing or were kicked out of their apartments or places they lived if people found out they were lesbian and gay. Fortunately, over the decades, um, the, a lot of that is changing uh, in the United States and in Minnesota. Minnesota is proud to be a leader in some of the legislation to protect discrimination um, with um, queer people, and lesbian and gay and bisexual and transgender folks. Um, so I, let me just look at my notes, see what else I wanna say, and then maybe I will pause um, um, my uh, deep friendship uh, and relationship with Millen. And, um, and I know it's, it's tremendous the issues that you struggle with and and the stage that you are at and I just I just absolutely uh, applaud you all for showing up the risks that you take it's a lot of risk taking it is a lot of risk taking I am proud to stand in the United States we now have we have for the first time in the in the United States three generations of people who are out at the same time. That's never happened in our history before. 
You know, uh, certainly th that we know there are queer people and GLBTQ people in everywhere in the world since the beginning of time. They use different words to describe themselves. You know, and every generation has to use the words to describe themselves. Like, for instance, to use, I mean, it as a as an activist and as a justice person, <clears throat> it took me quite a while because of my age. It took me quite a while to be able to be comfortable to use the word queer. You know, in the 70s, you know, and people of my generation will tell will talk about this in the <clears throat> United States. Queer was a word used to hurt people, to bully people. I was chased once called queer, 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 queer. I was feared of for my life and being chased using that word. So, you know, every generation has to find the words, just like the previous generation wasn't comfortable using lesbian. They would, homophile was the generation that in the, in the 50s, or daughters of Belitis, you know, were the words used by that generation. And so every generation in terms of empowerment finds their words and finds their, their way to, to um, name their truth and they're still sleeping and he's standing up here. So he started beating me, my face and beating my face. And I realized I had to stop fighting with my body and I had to stop fighting with my words. And so, um, so it was brutal. There's no way around it and no polite way to talk about rape without talking about that. And the thing that happened is that I, I think my ability to talk and to make up stories and to talk, you know, saved my life in some ways. Um, didn't save me from being raped, but saved my life. And um, when, you know, it took place over the course of three and a half hours, and partly, I think it took so, you know, the, the experience of raping, I call it, took so long because I fought with my words and tried to navigate different things, tried to be in charge of what I could be in charge of. And so um, uh, eventually, when, it, when he was done and it was over, I pushed him out of the room, called the police, and the police came, small coal mining town community, population like 1,200. So the police came with all of their, they probably hadn't had someone report, especially someone my age, report a rape in probably 30 years. You know, I don't know. But anyway, um, um, so, so here's the other reality is I had brought, uh, I was lead, reading a lesbian novel at the time. And, um, and I brought stuff from work, you know, I was the department chair at the time. And so when the police came, I'm in the room, I'm beaten up, the lights off, I'm shaking, I'm terrified. I'm just like, in this altered state of consciousness, um, of fear and terror and just uh, coming back, trying to come back to myself. So they came in really, really hostile. They came in flashing the light in my face, assuming I'm a prostitute, assuming I'm a prostitute. And um, they, what's going on here, you know? And so I'm trying to tell the story and they wouldn't listen to me. They interrupted me. You know, we got a report. Someone had an altercation here. And I said, I was raped. And, um, and is they flashing the light in my eye? And, and looking around the room and, and no kindness, no warmth. And the other thing is um, uh, I was afraid, here's another thing. I was afraid with the police that they would see my lesbian novel. You know, it was a detective novel, you know, but I was, I was afraid they would see it and they would, they would um, think I was something negative because of my, uh, because of homophobia in the world. I thought that they would treat me poorly or something. And um, so, so, um, so here is where I was able to use my professional privilege. As they were treated. Is Melinda here? If he wants to say hi to Janet. <laughs> Okay, uh, 
seems we don't have any questions, but uh, thank you. Yeah. No, no, I think there is no question. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, Janet, it was really, really wonderful. I think one of the best <laughs> sessions that we had today. And so much of looking back and actually your inspirations for so many. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so we hope to meet you someday or maybe uh, most welcome to uh, our hometown or Assam or India whenever possible. And with that, I think we can uh, end the today's sessions with a happy note. And with like, uh, because it's the festival day and uh, with a happy note and with a lot of positivity so that we can have more such this, as you mentioned about the 101 Chesson about ex sharing the experiences. And with that note, we can end today. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. And all the participants. Thank you so much, Thank you so Thank much you. Janet. It's wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm okay. happy to come back on a different topic. Sure. Yeah.